Hi guys, welcome back. This is another GB Studio video. Uh, but today I will be going over how I make my artwork for GB Studio. Uh, making uh, games for the Game Boy is really easy because it only wants you to use four colors. And you can find these colors on the uh, gbstudio.dev slash docs uh, in the background section. Uh, and it gives you these four colors, which you can then take into your uh, preferred um photo editing software or you know pixel edit or or a sprite pixel software whatever um i use gimp for mine um which lets me um which is completely free you can get it yourself uh it's not an ad obviously because it's free um but yeah i'll show you how i what how i go about making my artwork for uh uh GB Studio in GIMP, but first we can uh, also look at the colors for the um, the sprites. Obviously, the sprites are a little different because uh, they they also use four colors, but the the fourth color, which is this bright green, is the transparency, which lets uh, the background show behind the uh, behind the actor, which uh, obviously you want. Uh, and the great thing about um, how these colors you're only allowed to, meant to use these four colors when you're making artwork. Is that when you take it into uh, when you take it into when you take it into GIMP or whatever your software you use, uh, these are the these are the four colors that you need to worry about, um, and you don't need to mess around by changing anything. You just copy those numbers here. You can just type them in here, uh, and then you're good to go. And once you've got them, you've got them forever, uh, and what, then when you obviously go into GB Studio, if you're doing a colored, um, a game with color, you just paint the color on that you want. And obviously, you you would have to set up the uh, uh, the color mode and make sure that each color uh, fits with the other colors. But because you're only working with those four original colors, uh, you don't have to really worry about, um, you know, using too many colors or you could, what I'm saying is you can easily change the color palette um, just by painting it on. And you do that in the engine so you can easily change your artwork, which is fantastic. If I, if obviously, I'm going to be colorizing Ticket Racing 2, and I don't have to make any extra artwork to do that. All I have to do is paint with the little paint bucket tool uh, and fill in the colors, basically. And uh, that, would, that could mean I can have different color buttons and stuff. Uh, Obviously, I can change the the entire background colors and whatever, but it means that I can do it and change it easily in the engine without having to worry about what I'm actually doing to the original artwork, which is fantastic. So I'll quickly uh, go over how I uh, make my artwork. Obviously, this is this obviously it's way easier. Once you've done it once, you can just uh, duplicate what you've done and then. Um, paste it over into the into another one and then you can work off of that and to make your new thing right so obviously each car has the same basic layout it has the has the car and it has the uh the stats and the name at the top so all i have to do is just change the name but yeah i'll show you how i make mine in in gb studio i mean in gimp so i don't know if you can see this but i'm pressing new and uh unfortunately you can't see this so give me a second okay so here we go we've got this uh we've got this little box here where i'm creating a new image uh, a new document sorry and uh obviously when you're creating a new uh document uh you get to choose the size of it right so obviously i've made a template for the gb studio background uh which lets me have it to the exact size of the screen when obviously in, in a point and click game this is exactly what you want you want the, the whole screen to be the exact size of the screen so that there's nothing cut off uh, but obviously in a in an rpg or something when you're when you're walking around you will want the um you'll want it to be bigger but then that's where you can up, you can scale it up so i'll just create this uh and i'll show you then what i do from here Okay, so here's the uh, file we made. It based it put the background as the uh, the color I was using, which was the light green. But if I delete it, then we've got a transparent background. Um, but what we want to do here 
is uh, turn on the grid. We want to turn on the grid because we want to see what the uh, what the game is seeing, right? So if we turn on the grid, we press show grid. Uh, we can also go into image configure grid. I'll just make sure you can see it. There we go. So oh, we're now configuring the grid. Uh, so obviously it started on it's starting on 16 and the background for GB Studio and Game Boys use eight uh, pixel grids. So what that means is that we want to see what the Game Boy sees. Yeah, so if we look at this, we can see that uh, many of the tiles are just black. Wait, oh, let me turn on the grid. Yeah, so if we look at this, we can see many, many tiles are just black and many are also just green. A lot are just white, and this one's also lighter green, right? So what it means is each of these that has each of these is just a block color is the same as the other ones that are just the block color. Um, obviously, these ones that are like more unique that have um, you know like this N in and stuff. Yeah, I might get I might be lucky in this, and that like this bit is the same as this bit or something. Obviously, I I'm not exactly sure. It's probably it's probably definitely not. Uh, but it doesn't matter because I've got I've got so many repeating tiles that I have space for the the special tiles basically that are the one offs that are the the main piece of art. Uh, what that means is I won't overload the system with information as GB Studio can only use 192 uh, unique tiles, and this becomes important when you're using very large maps because you can't you can't make a huge map with hundreds and hundreds of different uh, looking tiles with an amazing artwork because the Game Boy just wouldn't be able to render it. So you need to make sure that you're keeping it simple, right? So obviously, if we were to make a piece of artwork, we'd we'd probably want to we'd probably want to have a an idea of what's actually like how many tiles are we actually using, right? So obviously, you can you can what I do, what I like to do is uh is block out what I'm actually going to be doing, right? So let's just say this is some grass. Uh and let's say we, we draw a house. Uh and you draw a door. You put a little roof on the house. I know this is simple, but uh it <laughs> it uh does the job. So let's just put that here, fill in this. Maybe fill in the roof with some um with some dark. Obviously this is very simple, but if we were to break it down into its pieces, you can see that this this line is overlapping, which you arguably you might not want because the character can walk on this line possibly. So you obviously, but the great thing is each of these tiles is exactly the same. So this counts as one tile basically. All of the greens count as one, and obviously this is the, the same one flipped, which doesn't really count. But um, it obviously it's an artistic choice sometimes what you do. So if we were to move this onto here. Um, we can we can now say that this is a green one, but obviously now this one and this is the same as all these four, and this one's the flipped one. So it's all a it's a t artistic choice, mix of design choice, because you might you might put this exact uh, file into um, GB Studio and walk around it and think that it doesn't really work. And obviously you have to be aware of of these uh, of these straight lines as well, because they might seem straight, and you might think, oh great, they're they're just going along and doing their thing, but if we actually look at them, each single one is doing something completely different. And obviously, if you were to actually uh, do a line of two, 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 uh, they could more easily repeat between uh, between each each section. So you see here, this this uh, square is the same as this square. But with this one, this square is not the same as this square. You see how this one starts in the middle and this one starts down here? It doesn't work. And this one, you, my thing is the same as this one, but this square, it starts at the very bottom left and this one is two over. So you need to be aware of these repeating tiles when you're doing it. Uh, and once, you, once you've once uh, you had enough experience making these uh, testing uh, things, you can break them up, right? So if you know this is repeating, then you can you can just, you know that's a tile, that's your own fresh tile. So then this this is what uh when this comes in where we have a a tile sheet it's called and what it means is obviously this is more than 192 but out of these you can more easily make something that is a coherent piece of artwork 
if you're going to have a huge game, right? Obviously, with my ticket racing game, um, I don't I don't really need a tile set because all I'm doing is using this template where there has the black background, the car in the middle, and the stats, and I'm just duplicating it to to change the stats and to change the artwork. Um, so if we take a look at this uh, tile sheet, we can see some of the pieces that you might want, right? So this is for the um, space punk game I was making. Um, I have you see uh, these are wall pieces. So there's a middle piece and and uh, and like a I don't even know what you call it, but a pillar piece I guess. And then you got the left and right. You got alternate ones to make it look less boring. Um, and obviously you got s signs and titles that uh, you would want. Obviously sometimes sometimes you might not want to have everything on a tile sheet but for this one i i i did want to just to make it easier and i'll show you the software i use to to make the tile set these tile sets and make artwork with it so uh obviously look this is this is from a subway train um i got here the roofs some of the roofs that um obviously are angled at uh, 45 degrees so that each single one is repeating from the last um yeah and some Let's see some vending machines that you can you can take the top from it and move it across. Um, but yeah, different floor tiles. So yeah, so now I'll take you into um, Tiled, which is a a map editor that lets you uh, take these tiles and uh, and then make it into a map for you to export into GB Studio. All right, so here we are. In tiled, and as you can see, here down here is the um, on the bottom right is the is that same tile sheet, the tile map that we uh, were just looking at in GIMP. So I made this tile map in GIMP, and then I've imported it into here, and it's become its own tile map, which I can then use to paint on in here. Right. So obviously, it's completely. Um, it's, it becomes a uh, a design choice, right? You've you've got the artwork, you've got the pieces. All of these uh, pieces, you know, are uh, are all easily like put together. And like I said before, the, the the four colors makes it really simple. You don't need to have different color tile sets uh, because it's all the same uh, color. And then you change it in GB Studio. So obviously, the, all these little uh, machines are just slightly different variations. Uh, you see up here and stuff. Um, and it's just really simple. Like you can easily switch them out if if they don't look that good in game. And then you all you have to do is export it as a PNG, uh, and then you just put it into the files of GB Studio, and then you've got it in GB Studio, uh, which is fantastic. Obviously, I can make a new map with you now, just to uh, show you how it goes. And I think the the size of a GB Studio map is 20 tiles by 18 tiles. It should be in the uh, the background docs, obviously, um, but it might not say that exactly. I actually have to save this somewhere. I just doesn't really matter right now. Okay, yeah. So now we now we have our tile set which we made, uh, which is obviously just in GIMP. We can we can now make a a map for a GB Studio game, right? So obviously you have to remember where all your tiles are and what you want them for. Uh, but that's probably the easiest part since you did it yourself. Um, um, yeah, so obviously it's about scale and getting the uh, the feeling of the character in a room is quite hard sometimes. But and like which the thing I think I struggle with the most is making sure that everything is at the same uh, perspective. That's the hardest thing because obviously. You can make something that's top down, exactly top down, but then you don't want to see your characters top of your head, so you can change it a bit. So, and it just gets quite complicated. So, obviously, in here you can obviously copy and paste as well. Um, you can obviously there's so much you can do, and then all you have to do, you can even wait. Hold on, I'll just fill in the fill in the background. Um. And uh, yeah, so that could work as a room. And if we were to just export it, we can then put it into GB Studio. So now, if we uh, 
jump into GB Studio again. I won't import it, but I uh, I'll just show you how it works. Obviously, you have to once once a game gets uh, complex, you have to make sure that you've got a file system set up so you know what you're doing. You can't just uh, call it map one, map two. You should probably name them so that you can easily uh, get to them and uh, and re-edit them when you need to because you probably will need to. Um, but if you if you don't need to edit your maps uh, any ever, then uh, <laughs> you're probably probably doing something wrong because uh, you always, you always want to be improving what you're doing. So uh, make sure that when you're making your artwork, that you make a simple version, and then you you see or you try and test how, like where the limit is, and then ask yourself, do I need to cut this map up to make it so that it's more detailed, or do I need to and but smaller, or do you need to go in and make it more complicated because it looks really you don't really know what's going on it's always a uh, a balance between uh you know what your intentions are for the game and how the player perceives it so yeah so that's how i make my uh so i make my artwork uh in for gb studio obviously uh you need to make sure that you're referencing the documents right you see how yeah, 160 pixels by 144. It doesn't actually tell you how many tiles it is, but you'd, you're only allowed 192 unique tiles, and each tile is 8 pixels by 8 pixels. Uh, so this is important information that when you're making art, you need to be aware of. Uh, and don't be afraid to make placeholder art like I did with the um, with the house, because that that's where it starts. You need to start with something and then build from that, okay? So... You should not be afraid of making it like this. And then once, because you don't want to waste your time making something that's overly complicated or that isn't, uh, doesn't fit the game you're trying to, to make, right? The prototyping is a really important part of game design. So yeah. Yeah, so I think that's the end of this one, guys. Uh, I really hope that it um, helped. And just so you know that this, uh, the GIMP is completely free. It's not as good as uh, A Sprite, obviously, but A Sprite does cost money. Um, and this is basically just Photoshop with some features removed. It doesn't, uh, it's not very taxing on your laptop, I don't think. I'm using a pretty good laptop, but uh, it's not that good. And it's, it's not really had a problem. Uh, obviously, Tiled, Tiled is also free. Uh, all you have to do is uh, import the tile sets and then create a new map. And then use that tile set in the map. Um, I'm not going to make a tutorial on that unless I unless you guys really need me to, because there's a lot of information on it and uh, pretty self-explanatory. Um, just remember that the background, the background uh, pieces should be, uh, they should try and fit for the GB Studio thing. And you need to be aware of your character size as well, because obviously um, they're normally two, oh, they're normally four tiles, right? So they're two by two. Yeah, I hope that helped, guys. If there's any other information you guys want me to uh, say, I can obviously say it in the comments, or I can make another video. I can go a proper in-depth tutorial on on artwork or something. I don't know, because uh, that's that, well, I'm actually an artist. I'm not actually a proper programmer or anything. Um, but uh, I'm doing what I can. So if you like this video, please leave a like, leave a comment. Please tell me what you thought of it. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Uh, please suggest any more topics you want. Uh, um, I know that people have been suggesting a, a Zelda-style combat. I've been uh, thinking of how to do that, but I'm not really sure yet. Um, sorry if this has turned into a long one, but uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.